Hello, my name is Akata Kružikova and I am a PhD candidate at the Center for Research on Cryptography and Security at Faculty of Informatics, Masaryk University in Brno, Czech Republic. And I do some research in collaboration with Reddit Company. My talk will be about the role of a contributor security behavior regarding user authentication in open source projects from usable security point of view. So let's start with short explanation of the context of how to even investigate user behavior. To focus on human role in IT security, we have a research discipline called usable security. According to the International Organization for Standardization, uh, usability is defined uh, as follows. The extent to which a product can be used by specified users to achieve specified goals with effectiveness, efficiency and satisfaction in a specified context of use. Uh, on the other hand, the security is defined according to ISO again as uh, the prevention of damage to, una unauthorized use of, exploitation of and, if needed, the restoration of electronic information and communication systems and the information they contain to strengthen the confidentiality, integrity and availability of this system. Uh, basically, a goal of the usable security is to balance uh, the usability and security or let's say to achieve security via usability. Uh, usable security field has focused on applied problems and the interaction of cybersecurity and usability. However, there are two common problems for the field uh, that combines two disciplines, uh, which usable security definitely is. Uh, experts in one field usually do not have expertise in the other one. Uh, so to be able to understand contributed security behavior, uh, IT security expertise, it's not enough. So we need to use some social science techniques uh, as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we will focus today mostly on security behavior regarding authentication. Uh, firstly, let's see uh, at some more general problems in secure behavior regarding authentication, uh, which is not related only to IT professionals, but uh, more uh, to regular end users uh, as well. Users usually do not follow good security practices regarding user authentication and not only that. And it's very challenging for uh, designers of these security solutions uh, to propose solutions which uh, will be happily accepted by the end users. 20 years ago, it was believed that the main reason, uh, reason behind this uh, is that users are just careless, uh, but now we know that it's not true because the problem is usually not that the users are careless, but the problem is in low usability and incorrect understanding of security. Uh, now, maybe you can object that this is probably more applicable to regular end users than IT professionals who has a better idea how the security features actually works than regular users. And I agree with you. Uh, as you can see from the graphics on the green uh, triangle, uh, which demonstrates the amount of users, we have much more end users. Uh, and yes, we can imagine that the green area, it's not only the amount of users, but also the amount of troubles uh, of these users to use IT in a secure way or use IT at all. Uh, however, when we have a look at the blue triangle, uh, which demonstrates the impact of the security incident, we can see exactly opposite trend. Whereas uh, regular users uh, or the end users usually uh, treat them with their behavior only to themselves. Uh, yeah, and sometimes with a quite a big uh, impact or consequences. Uh, for example, in the banking context, uh, it's applicable only to one user, but he can lose a lot amount of money. Uh, but IT professionals uh, treat them with their not secure behavior to all users of their solution, which is much more people. Uh, so we have to also distinguish between the IT professionals and IT security professionals, because their understanding, perception and behavior could differ. 
We also have uh, to keep in mind that not every IT professional is trained in IT security. And in fact, that even the studies of IT security experts demonstrate that while IT security professionals follow security recommendations more often than regular end users, uh, even though the usability is an important factor for the IT developers as well. So for this project, uh, we focused on a simple piece in upstream development, authentication of independent developers on GitHub. The main reason for that was uh, the possible impact of security incident, as we can see from the previous slide with the two triangles. And some companies, including Red Hat, uh, use open source projects as a source for their internally maintained repositories. And these internal repositories I maintained and uh, maintained according to defined and verified processes. However, the input to these repositories, the input source codes, are codes created uh, by independent developers. And these developers are external to the company. Uh, so no policy or processes are applicable to these contributors or maintainers. No single sign-on is in place. Nothing like that. How and if uh, secure authentication will be used uh, in these projects is entirely based on the project developers uh, themselves or maintainers. If somebody steals the access to their account or steal their identity, it could have serious consequences. The attacker could uh, easier to smuggle some malicious code into the supply chain uh, this could result not only in some probably obvious security incidents, but also in the loss of trust and reputation and credibility of uh, that person, the developer, maintainer, contributor, uh, whatever, uh, could be seriously damaged. So uh, what authentication methods we can investigate in GitHub? Uh, the first method, uh, mandatory to all users, is the first factor authentication, login, and password. Uh, even though it's mandatory to all users, uh, the perception, how th these users perceive it, is interesting. Uh, second factor authentication, this is not mandatory. Users can choose one or more of them. They can start to use it and then deactivate it, change it for something else just uh, start to use one method then switch it to another one etc uh, between these methods or uh, one of these methods is authentication application which is basically software token user, user can choose which application uh, they want to use uh, for personal usage this is probably more suitable because no additional hardware is needed to buy and maintain Another option is security keys, uh, which is basically a standard hardware token for personal use. People have to buy it, but they can use their token, which they get from the company, uh, if they are willing to. There is no problem. Uh, and if the company, of course, uh, agree with that. Uh, SMS number, standard, or SMS code, which is a standard method, uh, I think I it's not needed to provide further details here uh, i just want to mention one interesting note uh, we wanted to investigate gitlab as well not only github but we did not get enough answers for this platform uh, however uh, the gitlab did not offer sms number as the second factor authentication the sms code as the second factor is not considered as very well secure in the present days uh, you probably may notice uh, that it's not possible to use SMS code as another level of security element for your online banking operations uh, from the previous uh, year or maybe uh, one year more, like two years ago. Regarding recovery options, uh, they are mandatory when all uh, not all, but at least one of the second factor uh, method is activated. The first one offered uh, a recovery codes. It's string of characters. You can see it on the picture on the right side. Fallback SMS number 
and recovery tokens. Uh, this is how it's called in the GitHub, but basically it's the inter interconnection with the account on of one of the most used social network, Facebook. We send a quantitative uh, questionnaire via mailing list to the Red Hat employees. And in this email, we ask them uh, to fill the questionnaire. In that questionnaire, we ask them uh, about their actual usage and perception of GitHub, GitHub account, sorry, and related authentication methods. Participants were also asked uh, to do some simple tasks with authentication log, some checking and filtering of the records. Uh, then security behavior regarding authentication and possible determinants of this behavior were measured via the model inspired by uh, psychology. Participation in the study was purely voluntary. Uh, data were collected anonymously and the company did not get any information who of their employees took part in the study and who didn't. And of course, the company did not get any particular answers for their employees. At the end, we got uh, 83 full responses from the representatives of both groups, the open source uh, project maintainers and the contributors. Most of them work as a software engineers and in Red Hat, uh, we got one third of our participants are from the US office, one uh, roughly one third from the Czech Republic, uh, from the Czech office, and one third from the other Red Hat offices. And the data are from the November uh, 2020. So let's look at the main results. So most of the people use two-factor authentication, which is very positive finding. Uh, the most used second-factor authentication uh, method is uh, the application or the software token, uh, where the participants could decide or the users could decide uh, which application they want to uh, download for free. Uh, and the second uh, most often second-factor authentication method was a hardware token. Positive is also the fact that the SMS code was the least used uh, method. Uh, next, we investigated how participants perceive the authentication methods offered by GitHub, not what they use, but how they perceive it. Participants were asked to evaluate all the methods, even if they were not using them or have no experience with them. Again, both in the terms of the security and the usability. This evaluation was uh, for all methods, uh, or the results are that the evaluation was for uh, most of the methods, uh, at least uh, as a rather positive in the terms of usability and security, except for Facebook. Uh, Facebook uh, as a method got significantly less answers than other methods. Less than half of participants decided not to evaluate to Facebook just to skip this question. This could uh, have different reasons. Uh, the method could not make sense to them. For example, they do not have a Facebook profile. So the, they uh, didn't want to spend time even thinking about it, even when they were asked to evaluate all the methods, regardless if they have any experience with it or not. Uh, another interesting information, uh, which we can uh, see from the evaluation from the small sample is that they rate it is uh, the Facebook as a very low, uh, both in the terms of usability and security. So as a rather not usable and insecure. Uh, interesting question came up from this. And that's it. Uh, if the system or the service deploy or offer some uh, security method security feature which do not make sense to users or users just do not tr trust that method uh, will be the whole user perception of that system security affected by this or not okay let's look at not such a positive fi findings uh, which is about the policy 
participants were confused with the rules applicable to their account, which we can see from 36% of participants who did not know if any policy is applicable to their account or is not. As I said before, we focused on independent contributors to open source uh, with their personal accounts. So some of uh, our participants could use accounts managed by their uh, company as well. 26 of uh, them uh, actually reported to have some company policy uh, applicable to their account. However, there is nothing between these two states. You have your personal account or you have the, your account maintained by the company or from the company. Uh, so where is the risk? It's important that users know if somebody is taking care of the security or the responsibility, for example, the company via the policy, or if it's their own responsibility, so they know they have to focus on securing their account by themselves. Okay, we have to be careful uh, with interpreting and generalization uh, of our results. Why? Because we uh, registered 252 clicks on the survey link, but we got only 87 full answers. Uh, and then 83 after cleaning. We send it uh, on the, uh, the invitation to the research on the mailing list with around uh, 10,000 recipients. So the response rate is very low. Uh, since IT professionals are very hard achievable sample, we have to rely on participants' willingness to take part in our study, which always brings self-selection bias. Uh, the self-selection bias uh, means uh, could mean in our case that our sample consists mostly from people which are more interested in our topic, or the topic is more important to them. Our sample perceive themselves also as a rather IT security savvy, uh, which could also influence the results that only the people who are aware of IT security took part and positively influenced the results because it's important to them, it's inter interesting to them, uh, they maybe have more knowledge about them. Also, the number of participants, it's not very high. Uh, I would say it's quite borderline, but honestly, the problem it's uh, not only in our research, but in the whole uh, social science or usable security or UX testing, because people usually do not enjoy filling in questionnaire, especially uh, IT professionals. So uh, since we did not have access to the participants' GitHub accounts, which would be, by the way, not ethical, we have to rely on self-reported data. However, participants were encouraged to work with their accounts with provided links, uh, which could help them to fill the questionnaire uh, quicker and more precisely. So be able to have stronger conclusions about the contributor security behavior, we would need to have bigger sample. However, I would like to take away from my today talk these three takeaways. Usability and security of authentication is important to IT professionals as well. Not only authentication of commits is a serious risk in supply chain attacks, but also weak uh, user authentication as well. And this is important topic, and uh, this topic needs more attention in the future. If you are interested in more details from this research, please see our article in the Red Hat Research Quarterly from the August 2021 uh, for more information. Now that's uh, all from me, so thank you for your attention.